measures to ensure that terrorists and criminals are denied access to our financial systems. Security chiefs in Africa seek solutions to illicit financial outflows to combat terrorism on the African continent. The peace and peaceful coexistence in Southwest, we still want to keep that. President Buhari is soon to clarify issues on Ruga settlement. And see how we can create a widow's might as a Senate to show our practical support. Senate orders Federal Ministry of Finance to release funds for Northeast Development Commission. And INEC produces electoral documents in compliance with election petition court order as the Supreme Court panels sit during vacation. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NT Network News. I'm Cyril Stover in Abuja. Dotun joins me from Lagos. And uh, here is the news. Heads of intelligence and security services across Africa have begun a brainstorming session towards finding lasting solutions to illicit financial outflows from the continent in view of their devastating consequences on national security and development. It is the 16th ordinary session of the Committee of Intelligence and Security Services of Africa hosted by the National Intelligence Agency. President Mohamed Buhari, who declared the session open, described the task as not only laudable, but essential to Africa's prosperity and stability. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has details. It is estimated that African countries lose over $60 billion annually due to illicit financial outflows, a figure much higher than the total aid coming to the continent. In fact, records from the United Nations show that between 1980 to 2009, nearly $1.4 trillion was taken out of Africa, a continent in their need of development finance. This conference of African intelligence and security services is therefore an attempt to lay a solid base for collaborative efforts required towards stemming the tide. In Nigeria, we have risen to the challenge. The fight against corruption remains at the core of our efforts to accelerate national development. We have recorded successes even though the perpetrators are not giving up and are trying to fight back. I am therefore pleased that this conference will boost the sense of urgency that we collectively have about this devastation and raise our response capacity at operational levels. Firm and unwavering action, President Buhari said, is imperative towards achieving the objectives as terrorist networks and other criminal syndicates actively undermining the security and stability of Africa not only fund their operations from the proceeds of crime, but are implicated in much of the illicit financial outflows from the continent. I therefore urge you to develop actionable strategies to stem the flow of illicit funds from our continent. Give priority to examining the links between crime and instability on our continent and propose measures to ensure that terrorists and criminals are denied access to our financial systems. Incoming chairperson of CISA and director general of the National Intelligence Agency, Ambassador Ahmed Rufai Abubakar, said other than direct harm to economies, illicit financial outflows facilitate financing of terrorist organizations criminal ventures and other subversive activities which constitute an existential threat to the continent which no amount of foreign assistance can undo. Putting an end to illicit financial outflows and several other security challenges is a task that we can and must do. 
We want to give assurance of CISA's continued efforts to fight all forms of security threats, including traditional and emerging transborder crimes, such as illicit financial flows. Our partnership with CISA is vital for our collective efforts to promote peace, and we must continue working together to strengthen it. More specifically, special attention should be paid to the complex competition between superpowers, the spillover from the Gulf crisis, and their adverse impact on our continent. The Committee of Intelligence and Security Services of Africa, CISA, was established in Abuja 15 years ago to build bridges of cooperation, collaboration, brotherhood, and solidarity towards confronting emerging security challenges facing the continent. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. A President Mohamed Buhari is soon to make a public declaration on the Ruga settlement project recently put on hold by the federal government. This is to enable Nigerians fully understand his viewpoints on the matter following the controversy generated in parts of the country. Or Neofife Obadiei Ogunusi announced this while speaking to journalists after an audience with the President on security and other critical national issues. Here again is State House correspondent Adam Sambu with the report. The owner of Ife, Oba Ogunusi or Jaja II, met President Muhammad Buhari on behalf of other traditional leaders in southwest Nigeria. Their discussions held behind closed doors centered mainly on the challenges of security in the region, which he described as worrisome. The issue at hand in southwest is real. We have wrong people in our midst. The peace and peaceful coexistence in southwest, we still want to keep that. We don't want any war to happen. We don't want any attrition. We don't want any anarchy. We want to work with government to defend our land. And um, to the glory of God, um, we told Mr. President that, and uh, he's uh, on the same page with us. While advising politicians to guard their utterances in the interest of the country, Oba Ogunusi said his engagement with the Nigerian leader was fulfilling. The president has said he will give directive immediately with the IG to go and see every nook and crannies of traditional institutions in Southwest. And that will probably extend across the so that we can separate the corn from the chaff. And um, you will see a lot of results going forward. And everything will come down by the very special grace of God. The owner of Ife, who described as unfortunate that some miscreants are hiding under the name of Fulanese to create confusion in the land, said the Ruga settlement issue was also discussed at the meeting. He has assured that he will say his own side of the story about Ruga because um, he wants to let the world and the Nigerians in particular know the true side of the story because it's been read out of context. Oba Adeye Ogunsi is the co-chairman of the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria, which has the Sultan of Sokoto as chairman. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, in the last three weeks, Zamfara State has enjoyed relative peace with more than 200 bandits surrendering arms and embracing amnesty and peaceful dialogue offered by the state government, thanks to the air component of the Nigerian Air Force, which provided the needed air patrol for the ground troops. Governor of Zamfara State, al Bello Mohamed Matawali, said this when he visited the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar in Abuja, doing dear reports. Zamfara State is one of the states ravaged by insecurity especially in the northwestern region. Banditry, kidnapping and robbery are top on the list, a development which threatened the peace and economic stability of the state. To address these and other security challenges, the state government instituted a committee to interface with critical stakeholders. It also sought the support of the Nigerian Air Force for the deployment of its air components as a backing for the ground troop. These, however, led to the introduction of the Operation Sharon Daji in some areas of the state. Today, the story has changed as the states now enjoy relative peace. To follow up on this achievement, the governor is again at the headquarters of the Nigerian Air Force to renew the synergy. I've done this in order to make sure that uh, we have a lasting peace in my state 
and we appreciate all the support that your men are giving us and they are equal to the task and they are equal to the standard. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abakar, said the 207 Quick Response Unit with over 700 personnel is receiving the needed logistics and other support to smoke out criminals within the states. The Air Force is said is deploying additional helicopters to its fleets. That the Nigerian Air Force will not relent, will continue to make sure that uh, uh, we have aircraft, sufficient aircraft that will support you. You are aware of the recently acquired Augusta 109 power helicopter, which were uh, commissioned by the vice president on behalf of the president during the Nigerian Air Force Day here in Abuja. Very soon we are going to deploy those helicopters, and we are also going to add the number of regiment personnel that we have in Gusau while assuring the government and people of Zamfara State of its support, the Nigerian Air Force stressed the need for intelligence sharing to fish out criminals in Abuja, doing dear NT News. And President Muhammad Buhari has expressed his delight at the International Religious Freedom Award conferred on Imam Abu Bakr Abdullahi of Nigeria by the U.S. Department of State. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, said President Buhari heartily congratulates Imam Abu Bakr on the well-deserved honor by no less a credible and formidable government agency. The President believes the recognition bestowed on the 83-year-old Muslim cleric is towering and befitting for the patriot who risked his own life and that of his family on June 23, 2018 to save the lives of hundreds of Christians fleeing from attacks by suspected bandits in Yelwengindeng, Akwati, Sui and Ngar villages in Barkinladi local government area of Plateau State. President Buhari therefore is elated that a Nigerian national has written his name in gold in the international arena and his deeds will resonate wherever and whenever there are discussions on religious tolerance, cordiality between Christians and Muslims in the country and around the world, affirming the commitment of his administration to freedom of religion and worship for all Nigerians. And for news from the legislature now, the Senate has called on the Ministry of Finance to release all the funds due to the North East Development Commission, the National Emergency Management Agency, and the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants, and Internally Displaced Persons to enable them address disturbing humanitarian crises in the North East and similar states across the country. A National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unquo reports. The mood in the Senate literally turned emotional as a result of the motion that painted a sordid picture of the humanitarian crisis in the North East. The motion by Senator Alain Dume described the extent of the humanitarian crisis in Nigeria, especially Borno, Adamawa, Yobe and Zanfra states, as precarious as it urged the executive arm of government to submit to the National Assembly a supplementary budget for adequate funding. More than 7.1 million people need humanitarian assistance in the North East. This issue of humanitarian crisis is really getting out of hand. And see how we can create a widow's might as a Senate to show our practical support so that other Nigerians can follow. Urge the federal government to also, as a matter of urgency, revisit the humanitarian crisis amongst the Bakasi people of Cross River State. The legislators commended President Muhammadu Buhari over the extended continental shelf project and urged him to pay up the outstanding financial commitment to ensure its conclusion, as moved by Senator George Sekibo. And make further delivery effort for his completion before it is done bad. The benefits to be derived from the additional area, if proven, is very, very immense. In an age where security matters a lot. We need to look at both left, right and centre, from the sea, on the land and all that. And let me also join all of us in commending Mr. President CNC for actualising this project really by funding it. 
The Senate has confirmed the appointment of Obama Maska as executive commissioner and three others as non-executive commissioners of the Nigerian Communications Commission, while Habu Galadima was also confirmed as director general of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies. Senator Uche Ekunife drew the attention of the Senate to the storm that destroyed several homes in Obosi, Mbo, and Orauku in Anambra State and requested that the Ecological Fund Office should visit the areas and all other states affected by global erosion. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, granted audience to some board members and management of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, during which he implored them to use their medium to preach peace and unity in Nigeria. So we need our people to stay here to develop this country. And therefore, we must ensure that we remain united. Senator Lawan described the role of electronics media as very important, especially in this era of fake news. From the National Assembly, NTN News. And the House of Representatives has urged the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, and the Non-Academic Staff Union, NASU, to suspend their proposed nationwide strike. National Assembly Correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports on the resolution of the House on this and other issues at Thursday's plenary. In a motion of urgent public importance by Representative Aisha Dokun, the House urged the federal government to interface with the unions and address all pending issues to avoid the strike action, which it believes has been a major setback to the educational sector in the country. The non-academic staff are also part of those that make and enhance the education system and makes it a complete success. So we cannot deny them what is their own right. So if they go on strike, our children will go back home, they will be roaming the street, and remember, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Another motion of urgent public importance adopted by the House is that to address the incessant attacks and killings of Nigerians in South Africa with reference to the death of Elizabeth Obenu Jundubisi in Johannesburg, South Africa on the 13th of June this year. This Nigerian died of unnatural causes in a hotel room in the Casino Palace Hotel in Johannesburg from unnatural causes consistent with strangulation. The plight of internally displaced persons and returnees in Burma and other parts of Borono State and the need to provide them with a humanitarian services as moved by Representative Zainab Gimba and the need to eradicate child destitution and removal of beggars from Nigerian streets through provision of standardized education system and improved their livelihoods were also adopted. Nothing is done. The humanitarian crisis will further worsen with the coming rain and create a major food shortage for the people. Those in people say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The aye. aye serve it. On the Wari Dagwe Road project, the House commended the federal government urging for its expansion to Abuja as well as overhaul of rail infrastructure across the country for economic development. The House also approved the request by President Mohamed Buhari to appoint 15 special advisors in line with the provisions of Section 151 of the 1999 Constitution as amended and also transmit same to the Senate for concurrence. Plenary was adjourned Tuesday, the 23rd of July 2019 from the National Assembly. Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. Now, after 28 years of being a squatter since its relocation to the Federal Capital Territory from Lagos, the Voice of Nigeria now has what could be described as a world-class edifice to house its workers, courtesy of the successful fight against corruption in the country. Adibala Brooklyn Sunday was at the official handing over of the office and now reports. Records show that between January and June 2019, EFCC has been able to secure 502 convictions. This five-story multi-million Naira building located at plot 1386 other crescent of Aminokanu Crescent Wuse 2 is one of the forfeited property acquired with the proceeds of economic and financial crime by a Nigerian. And in line with government's commitment to the preservation of forfeited asset policy, which encourages allocation of such assets to government agencies in need of office accommodation, EFCC presented to the board and management staff of Voice of Nigeria documents of the building. 
Only a few frontline people will not bring us down. We will stand against them, we will fight them, and we will bring them down. <laughs> Director General Sita Okechukwu expressing his appreciation to President Muhammadu Buhari for making Voice of Nigeria a major beneficiary of one of his patriotic anti graft war. For God's sake, if you're a public servant, in deducting your allowances, your travel allowances, your salaries over the years, it cannot build this. With this building, the edifice that we have, I can assure you, just tune in Voice of Nigeria and you hear us better, more effective. Voice of Nigeria has moved most of its equipments from Radio House to the building, in addition to the newly acquired ones with the support of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And our time for our first break. Stay with us to NTA News. We'll be back. Enjoy the best of African football as NTA, Africa's largest television network and hotspots, Nigeria's foremost sports production and marketing company, bring you all 52 matches of the Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019 live from June 21 to July 19, 2019. Yes, all 52 games will hit your screens in crystal clear digital quality. It's your guarantee of a memorable viewing experience and a wonderful cost-effective opportunity for corporate Nigeria to reach tens of millions of Nigerians. For sponsorship and commercial support, contact Abubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. Hot Sports, masters of the game. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Hey, now me I go ask and say, why all of us go pay hundred hundred thousand naira? Say, cause say your husband he want do seventieth birthday. She and all of us marry him together. Hey, when her mama die, she collects money. Her papa die, she collects money. Her mama mama die, she collects. You remember when she talks, say she wanted her mama mama dead body. Mama, you too talk. Now you be glad when they dash me credit anyhow. Imagine, <laughs> forty year old dead body. Why do they laugh now? <laughs> Now, try to bring your money. Mama, no laugh. Not be you, Jerry. Now, some uh, apropos uh, customer, they, uh, when they know they mind their own business. Whoa. I never even begin to give you her gist. Glow and Mebo get five times your recharge. To call all networks. Recharge with star, triple five, star, pin, hash. Make her sell my market finish first, eh? I will call you back. Oh? 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 Glow Unlimited. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, invites all secretaries to state governments, permanent secretaries, heads of cabinet affairs offices in the northwest geopolitical zone consisting of Jigawa, Kaduna, Kano, Katsina, Kebi, Sokoto, and Zamfara states to the fourth in the series of the regional mail meeting for secretaries to the state government and heads, permanent secretaries of cabinet affairs offices, which is a follow-up meeting on the outcome of the maiden meeting held in the second quarter of 2019 in Abuja for secretaries to the state government, permanent secretaries, heads of cabinet affairs offices. The meeting is designed to, among other things, develop a synergy between the cabinet affairs offices at the federal and state levels in order to develop a framework for a community of practice. The follow-up meeting is scheduled to hold as follows. Date, Friday, July 19th, 2019. Time, 9 a.m. Venue, African Hall, Government House, Kano. Announcer, Babatunde Lawal, Permanent Secretary, Cabinet Affairs Office, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. I want to buy Indominus. Go back, please. Yo. This is not my Indominus. Please, sir, if it's not Indom, don't call it Indom. Sir, the taste is the difference. The difference is in the taste. That's why my brothers, my mommy, my daddy, and I all enjoy a delicious, so very delicious Indom minute. <laughs> the difference is the taste. Taste is the difference. Yes. Difference is in the taste. Nothing tastes like mine in the <laughs> Indomie Super now available at 85 Naira. Indomie noodles. Taste nutrition good for you. Hello, my name is Babadi Bamidili Mos, pastor in charge of province of the Redeemed Church of God FCT Province 4, Abuja. Let me use this opportunity to invite you to the and second edition of NTA Choir Concert 2019 with the theme Sound is Praise. Coming up on the 20th of July 2019 at the NTA Arena, Area 11, Garipi, Abuja. 
It's going to be a wonderful time praising God together. Make it a family out. Thank you. God bless you as you come. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Thanks for staying with us on Network News. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has complied with the order of the Presidential Election Petition Court to produce some electoral documents before it. The order followed the plea at the instance of the People's Democratic Party and its candidate, Atiku Abu Bakr, at Wednesday's hearing of their petition. The court also dismissed three applications this Thursday. Dili Atumbi reports. The PDP and its candidate, Atiku Abu Bakr, through their counsel, Chris Uche, SAN, reminded the court of its summons on the chairman of Independent National Electoral Commission and the resident electoral commissioner in charge of Sanfara State to produce some electoral documents used during the presidential election. The petitioner had complained about their inability to get the documents to prove their case. So, in compliance with the order of the court, the electoral umpire produced the documents. They had approached me before, say, we need, these are the remaining documents that were not produced. Well, what are we going to do uh, uh, with the documents? Law, law is a different thing. What you say, you, you can hold a document. If you don't know how to tender it, the court cannot use it. So, we are not afraid of tendering documents. In fact, we will give them. But if they don't follow the procedure, we will still object. Glass, they have been provided. And uh, we want to express our gratitude to the court that they had to take a court order for a public institution like INEC to do what the law had, had, had provided that it should do. And you can see within just 24 hours of uh, the making of the order, all the documents that have been asking for for months, they are all here. Also this Thursday, the court dismissed the motion of the Hope Democratic Party seeking to amend the list of its witnesses. In a unanimous dueling, the five-man panel of justices led by Justice Mame Gaba affirmed that the prayers of the petitioners in this case were statute barred for not complying with the 21 days allowed by law while also dismissing the prayer for the party to amend the statement on oath of its witnesses, the court described the motion as an abuse of court process. This verdict brought to a close the pre-airing session on this matter, an airing of the substantive case is to commence on Monday 22nd July 2019. Also dismissed was the application of the People's Democratic Movement seeking to withdraw from the petition challenging the victory of President Muhammadu Buhari. The court cited paragraph 47, subsection 1 of the first schedule of the Electoral Act that all motions relating to an election matter must be brought before the court during the pre earning section or with the leave of the court. Justice Mame Gaba said failure to comply with the act denied the court the jurisdiction to entertain the matter. The hearing of the substantive case has been fixed for 24th July 2019. Has been struck out and dismissed. There is only one PDM petition. That petition is still alive. And as based on the procedure that happened today, we have been given a date for the substantive hearing of our petition, which is the 24th day of July 2019 for us. The law is that you can withdraw a petition at any time. But the problem we ran into today was that our application came after the pre-hearing sessions. So there's nothing we could do about that. The PDP and its candidate are expected to close their case this Friday. As at the last hearing, the petitioners have called 58 witnesses. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. On another front, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has announced that due to the high number of election-related appeals pending before the court, Two panels will continue to sit during the annual vacation, which marks the end of the 2018-2019 legal year. A statement by the Supreme Court's Director of Press and Information, Dr. Akonde Festus, 
said the two panels, each with five justices, will continue to sit during the holiday period in order to conclude all election-related matters due to the timelines placed on them by the Constitution. The Supreme Court said all parties before it will therefore be contacted by the panels. And the Kaduna High Court, presided over by Justice Darius Kobo, has adjourned to the 29th of this month, hearing of an application to grant Sheikh Ibrahim El Zakzaki and his wife permission to travel abroad for medical attention. Benny Adams has the report. Sheikh Ibrahim El Zakzaki and his wife, Zinat, through their counsel, Femi Falana, applied for permission to seek medical care in India on grounds that his client's health is failing by the day. He lost an eye a long time ago. Okay. And the second one is, you know, if, if there's no again medical intervention, he may lose the second one. Karuna State Director of Public Prosecution, Dari Bayero and his team objected to the request in an affidavit that questions the authenticity of the documents stating their state of health. Well, there is need for us to examine those documents submitted by uh, the land SA in, in support of his application today in court. And there is need for us to respond because they claim some of the doctors that examine Malam are doctors from renowned teaching hospitals here in this country. And these are issues that we need to find out, we need to research and we need to put the record straight so that the court will come to a just and justifiable conclusion on whether to allow Malam to travel or whether to allow Malam to seek medical help in, within this country. The hearing on the present application is to hold in High Court 11, presided over by Justice Darius Kobo in Kaduna, Benny Adams, NTA News. And staying with the judiciary, 10 members of the Islamic movement in Niger allegedly involved in the invasion attempt on the National Assembly on the 9th of July have been granted bail at the Magistrate Court, who says on 2, Habiba Oladipo has the details. Suspects who were charged with criminal conspiracy, unlawful assembly, assault among other charges were denied bail at their first appearance before the courts. On resumption of hearing on the case and their bail application, the magistrate delivered a ruling admitting them to bail. He however ruled that each of the defendants must produce one surety who is resident within the jurisdiction of the court. The prosecuting counsel, Abba Donatus, presented three witnesses to the court. Among them is Inspector Amelie Sheni, who sustained injuries from the attack by the Elzakzaki supporters. The case was adjourned to enable him to receive proper treatment and be strong enough to stand in the witness box to give his evidence. Both counsels did not object to the ruling and the case was adjourned to the 1st of August for hearing. Habiba Oladipo, NTA News. The Kano Office of the Department of Petroleum Resources has sealed off more than 20 fuel stations for sharp practices in selling petrol. The department sanctioned the air and stations as part of routine monitoring and surveillance in the state. Muhammad Rabiu Ali reports that most of the filling stations were dispensing their products above the regulated pump price. From 1st July to date, 217 stations were monitored in Kano and Jigawa State by the Department of Petroleum Resources to ensure strict compliance with the letdown rules. Most of the stations visited were found selling at or below the approved price of 145 naira per liter of premium motor spirits. However, while some filling stations abide by the rules and regulations, others engage in sharp practices. This is Conoyal Petrol Station Tarani in Kano Metropolis, undergoing renovation and at the same time selling PMAs. And despite that, they are also selling below uh, or dispensing uh, below the accurate volume that is under dispensing. And uh, some quantity, about 40,000 liters, were lifted with the name of this station and was diverted. Out of the 25 stations placed under seal for various offenses, eight were found under dispensing. 14 were sanctioned for outright diversion of PMS, while seized found operating with expired licenses. Whatever customers paid for, you should be given that commensurable volume. Where you give a customer short of his money, you cheated that customer. And it's DPR now to call on that company to either calibrate 
or to adjust as the case may be. The operations controller therefore warned petroleum marketers to desist from sharp practices as severe punishment awaits any defaulting company. From Kano, Muhammad Rabi Ali, NT News. An end to hunger, malnutrition and poverty is now in sight following the launch of a country plan on food security by Nigeria and the United States governments tagged Feed the Future Initiative. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday was at the signing and declaration of partnership between the two giants of their continents. One out of every four persons in the sub-Saharan Africa is said to lack access to adequate food as a result of hiking price and droughts. To tackle this challenge, the Nigerian government came up with various initiatives to restore agriculture to its status before the oil boom and stamp out food insecurity. Taking cognizance of the premium placed on food security and nutrition at both national and state levels by Nigerian government, the United States government selected Nigeria as one of the 12 countries and provided a blueprint for inclusive and sustainable agriculture-led economic growth that will strengthen resilience among people. And boost marketing capabilities with assistance to more than one point. 3 million farmers and their families. After signing the five-year implementation plan document, stands of exhibitors from all parts of the country were visited. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that the farmers are trained and have the funding and implementation to grow. We have a prioritized in children and women and the strategies are in place. Government is already working on it. The plan will focus on 11 target states. The more opportunities you have to maintain production, to keep people busy, the easier and quicker it will be for us to defeat insecurity. The program will be funded by the United States while coordinating and collaborating with other donors to avoid duplications. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. In the past, the NTA was described by some Nigerians as a rubber stamp of government. But since the appointment of Yaku Ibn Mohammed as Director General, the narrative has changed. This necessitated the visit by the Institute for the Study and Practice of Nonviolence to the NTA. Francis Form has the report. For some time now, the Institute for the Studies and Practice of Nonviolence in Nigeria has beamed its searchlight on the activities of the Director General, NTA with a view to finding out how Africa's largest television network is promoting non-violence, peace education, and the fight against corruption. After its findings, NTA was rated high in all the areas. Your commitment to the nation building, unity, peace, and non-violence education through your services to transform the NTA who being a country source of happiness and true with reliable information. In recognition of the Director General's efforts in disseminating information that has helped in making Nigeria a better place, an award of special recognition was handed over to him. NTA's Director General reassured the Institute's management of readiness to further advance the cause the institutes promote. It is a mandate to keep Nigerians informed. It is a mandate, you know, to uh, propagate, you know, the policies of uh, the administration of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. And um, every inch of the way, we try to do that as best uh, we can. And it's one thing to, um, to work as seriously and uh, it's quite another for people to appreciate what you are doing, no matter how, how modest uh, it is. So we thank you very much for um, believing in us and believing in what we do. The and Institute for the Studies and Practice of Nonviolence in Nigeria is a center of excellence in research whose main interest is carrying out evidence-based research. In Abuja, Francis from NTA News. 
Ministries, departments and agencies of government have been directed to pass all memos recommending and justifying federal government appointments through the Secretary to the Government of the Federation for due diligence before onward transmission to the President as contained already in extant circulars. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, in a statement, frowns at breaches to this laid down procedure and calls for strict compliance. The statement also noted that for uniformity and validity, all letters of appointment shall be signed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, except where such power has been expressly delegated. Let's now join Dotun in our Lagos Centre for more reports. Dotun. Thank you, Cyril, and welcome to Lagos. Agriculture in Nigeria has received yet another boost following the signing of a memorandum of understanding and a strategic partnership worth 70 billion naira between Nigeria Incentive Based Risk Sharing System for Agricultural Lending, NISAL, and Ecobank Nigeria. Nenrot Nina Musa reports that the agreement is aimed at enhancing the agricultural value chain. This scenario seals the deal between Ecobank and Nisal with the first tranche of 15 billion naira implemented. Managing Director, Nigerian Incentive Based Risk Sharing System for Agricultural Lending, Nisal, Aliu Abdul Hamid, explained that the agreement will aid both parties to jointly select and develop projects that will meet the financing needs of actors in Nisal's focal commodity value chains. We have created an ecosystem that is totally de risked. All participants will be locked in with Ecobank. All their accounts will be opened with Ecobank. The industry that will take this will also have a performa of take understanding. Part of the money provided by Ecobank will be used to finance tech, um, tractor service providers where harrowing, plowing, planting and harvesting will be done. Managing Director Ecobank Nigeria, Patrick Akimutong disclosed that the 70 billion Naira agricultural financing scheme will be issued in tranches to projects in the RICS agricultural value chains. We found the best partner in NISAL. And NISAL is uh, a baby of the central bank. Uh, with the de risking participation of NISAL, it enables us to give those facilities at very low rates, uh, single digit rates, uh, maximum of 9% to ensure that the users are able to make profit, and when our customers make profit, we also make profit. <laughs> they both express optimism that the synergy will help unlock opportunities of the continent for the continent through standardization, trade and investment locally and across borders. In Lagos, Nero Nina Musa, NTA News. The Joint Tax Board is adopting a West-based solution designed to obtain data from various sources to address the problem of multiple taxation and enhance transparency in the country's tax administration process. At the flag off of the National Taxpayers Identification Number Team in the Southwest region, the Executive Chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Tunde Fowler, said the initiative will help to expand the country's taxpayers' base to 50 million before the end of the year. Michael Olale reports. This unveiling signifies the end of the old era and the beginning of a new one, expected to be beneficial not only to taxpayers but promote the ease of doing business in Nigeria. At 45.6%, the Southwest geopolitical zone is the largest contributor to total IGR collection at the sub national level. This, the executive chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service believes, is an indicator that the zone holds immense potential that can only be unlocked with a robust approach to revenue generation. The new system also possesses the capacity to discover underlying and correlating trends and patterns that could lead to better visibility and increased internally generated revenue for all tiers of government. The taxpayer's identification number promises to deliver not only flexibility, but ability to tax authorities to efficiently manage and unify the database of taxpayers. The new system reduces the burden of multiple registration of taxpayers, as well as promoting the ease of doing business and paying taxes. The new system is innovative, 
inspires confidence and promotes transparency. The internet-based initiative allows users to either log on to the website to generate tax certificates or download a teen mobile application to effectively manage their tax profile. With improved tax revenues, the government can begin to win itself from over-dependence on crude earnings. Stakeholders are optimistic that this initiative will promote compliance as well as foster exchange of data among government agencies. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. This is NTA Network News. More reports after this commercial break. Please stay tuned. A member get five times recharge with star triple five star pin hash. Make I sell my market series first, eh? I will call you back. Oh, oh, oh. Glow Unlimited. Here you go. Madam. That's it. Those narrows are enough. Hi, dear. <laughs> Helen. You've got so much even after spending so little. Savings is such a necessity. You save everywhere, but here, you lose it all. How? With this? Impossible. New ticker Apic 10X. Even after applying up to one liter of your solution multiple times, you won't get the same cleaning that Apic gives you in a single round. And the expense? Far less compared to your one liter of solution. New ticker Apic. Top and cleaning, top and savings. <laughs> You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. We're back in Abuja with uh, the rest of the news. The first grand winner of a brand new saloon car in the Angote Cement Bag of Goodies promo in the Southwest region has emerged. The winner received the star prize at a grand ceremony in Ibadan. Kemiyoshi was there and now reports. The business of building the nation has been identified as one of the core values of the leading cement producers, Dangote Cement. This is not only in the dogged commitment to quality, but also the resolve to touch the lives of its customers through the ongoing bags of goodies, scratch and win promo aimed at rewarding customers' loyalty and empowering them with gifts ranging from cars, tricycles, refrigerators, and cash prizes, among others. The group managing director, Dangote Cement, Mr. Joseph Makoju, at the Star Winner presentation reaffirmed the company's resolve to continue to maintain quality at a competitive price. We are one of the few producers that use what is called robotic technology to make cement. And what this does is you have continuous 24 hour monitoring of quality. A lot of consumers, retailers, distributors, they have abandoned our other products for Dangote cement. The first grand winner of a salon car in Ibada region is Mrs. Success Godwin, who got lucky with one of the scratch cards found among the 15 bags of Dangote cement she bought for a family building project. I will be a living testimony today. And I want to say that it is real what people are saying about Dangote organization. Everybody wants to do one or two things concerning cement. And they always ask for Dangote, Dangote, Dangote. Not less than 21 million consumers across the country are expected to benefit in the ongoing promo by carefully scratching cards found in the Dangote cement bag of goodies. In Ibadan, Kemioshi, NTA News. A significant aspect of the obligatory pilgrimage performed by Muslims called Hajj and Umrah is observing prayer, also known as Salat, at one of the world's most sacred mosques located in Medina. Lami Ali reports on the activities of Muslims at the Prophet's Mosque. The Prophet's Mosque, also called Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi in Arabic, was the second mosque built by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
in the first year of the Prophet's migration with his followers from Mecca to Medina. The mosque, which has a capacity of accommodating one million worshippers, has in the last couple of days witnessed the convergence of Muslims from across the world, including Nigeria, who, in addition to the five daily prayers, engage in recitation of the Quran and supplications. It is my God I'm praying for. Then I, I, I worship my God. Then I now pray from Ya Rasul Lai to the last person I know as a family. Nigeria, peace and harmony. Information made available to NTA News by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria indicates that so far more than 10,000 pilgrims have drifted to the Holy Land for the 2019 Hajj exercise. In Medina, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Lami Ali, NTA News. Next, we link up with Caleb in our Just Network Center. Caleb. Thank you, sir, and welcome to JAWS. The Nigerian Defense Academy, Kaduna, says it remains resolute to providing quality military training that will secure and protect the territorial integrity of the country. The Commandant, Major General Adenoye, Oyebade said this in Jaws while visiting cadets undergoing training at the Citizenship and Leadership Training Center, Sherry Hills, Jaws. Abba Abubakari Yakubu reports. The week-long exercise, tagged Camp Highland, is part of the Nigerian Defense Academy curriculum intended to expose the cadet to the rudiments of soldiering and instill leadership skills in them. This is to position the cadets better in defending the territorial integrity of the nation. The plateau provided a platform that will test their mental and physical endurance as the cadets were engaged in various military maneuvers. Commandant of the NDA represented expressed satisfaction with the training and commended the instructors for their skills and commitment. Main aim of the compiling exercise is to assess the cadets both individually and collectively. Commander Operation Safe Heaven, Major General Augustin Agudu, appreciated the people and the state government for the peace which paved the way for such a national assignment to take place. It is only with this type of constructive uh, human activities that you can be sure that um, the society can grow. One of the cadets' representatives, Oluashi Oetunde, expressed commitment at improving the Nigerian armed forces and it's, it's going to help me to be a better officer in two months to come. The cadet will proceed to Kontogora in Niger States for the tactical phase of the training. In Jaws, Abba, Abu Bakari Akubu, NTN News. Cyril, Jaws is done, so it's back to you. Thank you, Caleb. And uh, just some more messages. We'll be back. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. The ambassador of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to Nigeria, Adnan Bustaji, has congratulated the Nigerian national team, the Super Eagles, for winning the bronze medal at AFCON 2019. The ambassador said the victory over Tunisia in the third place match was well deserved. He wishes Nigeria a better outing in subsequent editions of the continent's highest football competition. And now Tamara Ibiwe has more sports news. Countries have registered for participation in the Made in Africa Cup Track Cycling Championships, built for the Moshu Dabiola National.